All right, so let's get started in a seated position, pointing and flexing the ankles. It's getting full range of motion through the ankles, and then we'll alternate. We see this pattern in walking and crawling and locomotion, fully alternating, and then circles. So try and reach the full end range of motion of your circle, and then switch directions full end range. Then we're going to lie down on our backs and start our leg extensions. Try to go to the full end range of the movement, keeping your hips on the floor. Completely straighten your legs and then we'll cross over to the inside. So we'll add adduction. So we're moving through the six movements of the hip. When you add adduction, try to keep your hip on the floor and track your leg as far over to the inside as possible. Keep your toes engaged, your feet active. I'm going to take both legs up and we'll reach for the inside of the legs, extend the legs out, lift from the bottom of your belly a little bit to protect your lower back. Keep your feet engaged, your legs straight. Go to the end range of motion and hold the outsides of your knees, bend your knees, bring your legs back together and then we're going to roll to sit up and we'll come into our 90-90 position. So the knees are at 90 degrees, the hips are at 90 degrees, and we'll start with external rotation on the right side. Then internal rotation on the left side as you lean back, turn and face the left leg. Then active mobility, so we're going to lift and drop the left leg trying not to move the right leg at all. You're basing into the ball of your left foot. Then hold that outer range. And then we'll come into the seated horse's stance. We press the outer edges of the feet down, engage the glutes, drop the knees down, and then we do the same thing on the other side. So external rotation on the left side, keep the feet active, keep the angle, 90 degrees in the knees that helps to leverage at the hips then turn to internal rotation the fifth movement of the hip and then active mobility working within the range internal to external smooth movement again try not to move the left side so you're isolating the right side now hold the outer range and then come on to both sitting bones equally. Drive the knees down, glutes are on. Then we're going to move into all fours position. You can put some padding underneath the knees and we'll start with hip extension. Just simple kneeling to high kneeling. Smooth movement. The top of the movement, try to engage your glutes and make sure that your frontal hip points in your pubic bone are level. We're going to add the lunges into that sequence. So from kneeling, it's a good body control. Try to have the knee stacked on top of the heel. You can change the angle. So varying the angle, working with a fan. Variation, you can lift the back heel to get a little bit more hip extension. Training your balance, your coordination. and different angles of hip extension. Breathing through your nose throughout this sequence so you maintain equilibrium. Now we're going to work with all six movements of the hip through the controlled articulated rotation of the hip. So knee comes to the armpit, out to the side, up to the ceiling, and down. And then we switch directions. Try to max out the end range. Lift the leg out to the side, to the armpit, and back down. Try to keep the hip points level as you do this. So other side, big articulated rotation. Working with all six movements of the hip here. Controlling the movement, engaging the core, reversing.
and then we're going to move on to the spine. So arching and rounding the spine. Try to see if you can separate each one of your vertebrae's movement. The health of your spine here, the suppleness of the spine, then lateral movement, sideways movement. Bananaing the spine side to side. And when we combine hollow arch and side to side, we get rotation. So rotating through the full range of the spine. Spinal rotations. And really work out all the sticky spots. Now we're going to move on to scapular retraction and protraction. Try to keep your spine stable, so don't arch and hollow your back. Then elevation, depression, so shoulders up to the ears, down to the hips. Working with as much scapular movement as you can, then combining the four for rotation. Scapular rotation. Full movement of the scapula on the back. Again, try to keep the core stable. Then we're going to sit back and we'll work with the shoulders. So articulated rotation of the shoulders like we did with the hips. So the arm comes forward, palm facing in, engaging the core. So you can see I'm using my hand to help the trunk stability, the opposite hand. And remember to turn the palm. So when you go back, the palm is facing out. When you go forward, the palm is facing in. I'm going to switch to the other side. Nice and smooth movement. Again, try to get the full range. We're working towards having the, the movement be in one plane, as if there was a wall beside you. But, you know, find the range that is comfortable for you. At first, you might have to go out to the side. Next, we're going to move on to the wrist mobility. So turning the right hand back, lift the right palm, bend the right elbow, and then we're going to start taking the thumb in and out. Big circles now, controlled articulated rotations through the thumb. Keep the elbow bent, and then we'll shake that out in the left side, moving on to the thumb oppositions, in and out. Try to stretch it in and out as much as you can, and then turn that into a rotation. Big circle. Max it out, keep the elbow bent, and then we'll shake that out. Next, we'll move on to some strength work. So we're going to lift the thumb, lift the palm. Try to keep the shoulders on top of the wrists. And if that's really challenging, bring the knees forward towards the wrists. So thumb up, palm up, thumb up, palm up, in that sequence, so try not to push off with your thumbs. Next we're going to put the hands beside the knees and lean forward and then lean back and lift the fingers up. Try to keep the elbows straight and the palms on the ground. So lean forward, passive range, then active range, lift the fingers. We're working with the flexion at the wrists. We're trying to achieve this 90 degree angle at the wrist so that when we bear weight, there's no impingement. Then we'll move on to the neck, flexions and extensions, then side to side. Then ear to shoulder, singular movement, and then we turn that into a rotation. 360 degree rotation, exploring the available movement in the neck. Switching directions. Try to keep the spine long as you do this so you're supported from underneath the neck. So finishing up the last one, 
And there we have it, right on.